localization and glucolization. Most of you might be aware about these concepts also, since you would be entering into your fourth semesters. Okay. The next point which would be discussing in this chapter is the global integration local responsiveness grid. And strategy formulation, strategy implementation, and strategy managing on the global platform. Uh, globalization and strategic management. Competitive strategy and competitive advantage in global market. That is when you enter into uh, global market, what would be the competitive strategy? Because when you enter into the global market, the competition increases. There are more competitors. So in that scenario, how the company would come up with their competitive strategies or what are the competitive advantages that would be, we would be discussing. Then assessing country's attractiveness. Why to enter a particular country? What makes the company enter a foreign nation? Country attractive market and industry opportunities. So attraction as well as the Attractive market, I mean, as well as the opportunities which the company seeks in the foreign market. How do you assess the industry opportunities and analyze the risk while entering into the foreign nation, any of the foreign nations? So this is uh, with reference to your first chapter of the global strategic management. Now, students, one more thing that do attend all the sessions. The concept clarity is a must, is very important. Maybe those students who have given yesterday's viva, they might have understood this. That you should have the concept clarity. So that's why uh, for this semester, as you already know, in the meeting, wise I also shared that we have less time. So there is a possibility that we may cover up all the subjects one by one. So this was about the uh, just the insight of the first chapter. Now coming on to the further part. Now let's start discussing about this. come to the first part that is uh, what is globalization now the screen is visible yes ma'am okay so globalization it refers to practices by which organizations become better connected to their customers so here maybe the company is in us or uk and the customer is in india or in china so here because of the globalization error, because of the internet revolution, the companies get easily connected to their customers or client overseas. Now, globalization is also a process by which the world is becoming increasingly interconnected as a result of massively increased trade and cultural exchange. Now, globalization has also increased the production of goods and services. Since the demand from customers across the globe is increasing, the demand is increasing. That's why the production is also increasing. Now globalization is the process of interaction and integration among people, companies and governments worldwide. So here we said it's a process of interaction and integration. Integration, that is maybe the companies come together, the people come together, the governments come together. That is what is interaction and integration among people, companies and governments worldwide. Now we take into, when we take into consideration the governments worldwide, it refers to the maybe to the 
mode of entries may be to the mutual trade agreements between the governments of two nations or two countries the global interactions has caused a growth in international trade and exchange of ideas beliefs and culture so it's not only restricted to the company or the product or a service but it's moved ahead to exchange of ideas beliefs and exchange of the culture also now globalization is the spread of products technology information and jobs across national boundaries and cultures globalization refers to any activity that brings people cultures and economies of different countries close together in business globalization refers to practices by which organizations become better connected to their customers around the world now uh, why global marketing is imperative now here the first and foremost point is the saturation of domestic markets many a times what happens suppose if you are in a specialized category of the product and there is no that much demand that is one case where in the local markets or in your country there is no much demand or maybe when we say it's a saturation of domestic market that is because of the other competitors the demand after a certain period it stops at a constant level you find that it does not exceed beyond certain level in that case you expand the market to the global nations that is one scenario otherwise maybe you have more production capacity so that you can meet the demand of the global customers so these are the two three scenarios where this global marketing becomes imperative or mandatory if the companies want to increase their revenue their profits they have to cross this mark or restriction to the national market and step ahead to the global market now samsung and hyundai they come from korea simex from mexico dom's coffee from australia they are competing head on for global dominance they are competing with well established players from the developed countries now second is unfavorable domestic economy so what is this unfavorable domestic economy means that suppose if there is a recession in one country the other country happens to face expansion the um, domestic economic scene may not be same with this reference to all the nations they do change so that's why suppose if you are facing recession in one nation then the company can think of extending their products into other nation into a developing nation where the economy is much more in boom losses at one place but maybe you may earn profits in the other nation so in this scenario also the company thinks of entering into the global market the next point is the emerging markets then there is a huge market that is coming up which comprises of several countries which are coupled together and called as emerging markets that includes chinese economic area that is china hong kong and taiwan india south korea mexico brazil argentina south africa poland turkey and it also includes certain association of southeast asian nations that is called asean a s e a n that includes indonesia brunei 
Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, and Vietnam. So these countries are emerging, emerging markets. For your general understanding, is that now they cross their uh, gross domestic product at sector. They are increasing. Now they have more purchasing power. So that is why they are called as emerging markets. The next point is the global competition. Competition around the world and profile <coughs> proliferation of the internet have been on the rise and are now intensifying. Now, because of uh, global competition, it is giving rise to another force that is called as global cooperation also. So somewhere competition has led to the next point that is the need for global cooperation also. Um, Japan's Sony, Toshiba and US computer maker IBM jointly they are developing advanced semiconductor processing technologies for next generation chip. Also many components of Apple, iPhone, they come from Samsung. So although Apple and Samsung, they are competitors, okay. But on the other hand, they are also cooperating. So we say that global competition also brings global cooperation because each and every company nowadays, they want to sustain. Many of the global players, okay, they have joined hands with Amazon Flipkart because of this uh, internet revolution, which takes us to the next point of internet revolution. So here the types are there. So Amazon may be selling at a single time more than one competitive products. Internet has brought the whole world very much closer. So here, uh, time is not of constraint as far as the internet is considered. Uh, whether you take the backend activities or the forward integration of the companies, internet has plays a major role. Within no time, you can place the order. Okay, only here the gap is with the supplies. That is the movement of goods physically. Only that is the uh, limitation over here as far as the time constraint is considered. Otherwise, everything is fine as far as uh, placing the orders is considered, uh, booking the order is considered, taking the feedback of the customer, understanding the choice of the customer. The internet has helped uh, this. Now here we go to the next point that is importance of global marketing. Why the global marketing has become important? The first and foremost reason is the cost reduction. See, uh, when we speak about the cost reduction, naturally when you have the more capacity of production and you are catering to the demand of the global customers, this increases the demand as well as the supplies, which again helps in reduction of the cost or price. It achieves the economies of the scales. So when you expand the market, when the demands are flourishing, in that case, uh, the per cost is spread across the products and the cost gets reduced here for many of the products. The second is the enhanced customer preference. So here when we think of the global customers, the customer preference plays a very important role. Suppose it's a technology driven product. It's a very quality product in that case, like we have the electronic goods or we can say the automobiles, which are technology driven. So in that case, the customer gives much preference for such enhanced or technology driven products. 
so even the companies can enjoy the revenues or the profits see when uh, any foreign nation enters the other nation they face the competition from the local market but if this foreign nation comes up with the pro product of good quality as well as the uh, to some extent they meet the price requirements of the customers in that nation then they get the due preference as compared to the local products in terms of quality and here they get an competitive advantage in these nations improved quality of product and programs so here when you take into consideration the global customers okay the company strives hard to maintain their quality and introduce the quality programs to enhance the product as well as the service standards it's not easy for the companies to meet the requirements of the global customers because it's the face of the nation which enters the global market and the companies start gaining the reputation and the brand name in the global market or global scenario so here the company has to stick to the quality aspect then and then only it enters into the market and now again it depends upon uh, which market you enter which market area or criteria you enter here next is a increase competitive advantage on a global basis so here uh, maybe a company a certain company may have a monopoly in their own nation but when it enters into the global market it faces stiff competition from the other competitors also so while competing with the others the company has to have its thorough marketing research because it has to maintain its standards it has to compete with the other competitors maybe it's a automobile market maybe it's a cosmetic industry maybe it's uh, any other industry it has to have its own usp or it has to has its own competitive edge to maintain the competition or to be in this survive in this competitive environment of today's era so this is about the importance of global marketing now this uh, global marketing it emphasizes on standardization coordination across markets and global integration standardizing marketing programs across the world across the different countries so somewhere they have to uh, standardize this many of the companies they standardize the products also or there are some companies which change according to the requirement of the local needs coordination across markets now it means here reducing cost in efficiencies and duplication of efforts among their region national and uh, regional subsidiaries also global integration participating in many world markets to gain competitive advantage effective and integration of the firms competitive campaigns across these markets by subsidizing operations in some markets with resources generated in other markets now global marketing does not necessarily mean uh, standardization of the products promotion pricing or distribution strategies across the world but it is the company's proactive willingness to adapt to a global perspective instead of country by country or region by region perspective in a developing marketing strategy now what are the advantages of this global marketing the first and foremost thing is the increased choice now here uh, one country produces one product the other country has its own uh, monopoly or you can say has a competitive edge in the other product all the nation does not produce all the goods or services up to the same mark or up to the same quality 
So here, uh, it gives the increased choice for the companies to expand into foreign nations as well as for the customers from both aspects. For the customers to have more bundle of products to choose. Next is the higher quality goods. So here, uh, if we see, when we hear that it is a product from France, product from Germany. Okay, so here the quality matters. Few of the products like German make is famous for their technology. <coughs> watches, maybe Swiss watches are more famous. So here they come up with the taglines, these product. The quality emphasis is attached or these labels are attached with the products. Since those specific countries have their specialized make formula, which gives them a upper edge in the global market. The next point is the increased competition. So here, for companies, when it's an increased competition, the companies strive to be more efficient in the market. And for the customer's point of view, it gives a price advantages also. Since in the competition, every company strives hard to offer better quality products to the customers with the competitive pricing. So here again, it depends upon the number of competitors, the type of customers. One cannot think of a, a just a offering a very standardized high quality product at a very low cost. Okay. So even that has, that balance has to be uh, maintained by the companies. Economies of scale. So globalization provides with a much bigger effective market in which to sell their goods. They can scale up their production. As level of production increases, their margin on each goods or services uh, provided can increase as their fixed costs remain the same or become incrementally smaller. So uh, the companies enjoy the economies of the scale with the increase in the demand for the products. Increase labor mobility. Individual workers move to other countries. The global uh, economics can better match supply and demand. Like for example, New Zealand must import a significant number of skilled agricultural workers every year to harvest its crop as they are finding it, uh, it's very scarce in New Zealand. Similarly, if you uh, take into consideration the developed nations that uh, like UK and uh, USA, they have to import the technical staff from the Asian countries. Similarly, if you uh, take into consideration the countries like UAE, even they have to uh, import the staff with the specialized or skill categories, we would take into uh, consideration the aviation or the construction part. They have to import the skilled personals from other nations. Same is with the African countries also. The next point is increased capital flows. The capital is able to flow into developing economies, providing a significant form of finance that business in that economic would not have otherwise have access to. Now, if you just consider the example of India, uh, after this uh, globalization, liberalization, okay, many foreign nations entered into India. It allows the foreign investments to flow into a particular nation, which gives a boost to the economy. Once the finance is there, once there is capital, which is the major requirement for any businesses, it helps in the boom of the economy, to upliftment of the economy, we can say. Improved international relations. Of course, the 
last but not the least is the uh, improved international relations so bilateral trade start taking place the relations between the two nations improve in the business context as well as on the political grounds also so these were some of the advantages of uh, globalization so any doubts up till here hello the next is no ma'am uh, limitations we can say or disadvantages of this globalization the first point is the possible monopolization of the multinational companies like uh, large enterprises from developed countries may move to into smaller developing nations and take over the market so their possible uh, specialization quality efficiency in providing a particular good or service may mean that local producers in the developing country they may get affected and here if the government does not take the cognizance then it is totally like we can say it's a monopolization of the market for the companies they started ruling the market now if you see we are also facing the problems if you consider the china since maybe the people or much more awareness has been created on the political ties okay so there are many reasons for this uh, in india the increase of the chinese goods okay is on rise so there is some awareness among the people that uh, ban the chinese food and all okay but unless and until the government takes some uh, or government plays some role okay the things won't move ahead so here if the government realizes the threat from the particular company then it can play a, a major role maybe they can restrict the entry to a certain limit the structural unemployment Uh, if a country is no longer competitive in production of a particular good this may mean that its production rapidly moves offshore and workers are left unemployed or maybe if the company starts importing the skilled personnel okay uh, from the other nations so this the people from the other nations they get employed and the localites they are left jobless so this was the issue with the us this was a problem and even now there is some problem with respect to this employment those uh, people those who are working there okay so the localites they have a their say that since the foreign nations are getting employment we are left jobless the talent and the uh, skills is the other part here the next is the interdependence now here it may happen that one country becomes dependent on other nations for their supply chains okay so here the dependency increases if suppose a foreign nation is a supplier of the raw materials so by one or the other reason if there is any obstacle in this chain then they may no longer be able to produce the goods themselves so here when you are dependent for the either the supplies or maybe uh, for some other reason maybe technology on the other nation if there is some problem with that nation then the company remains paralyzed as it is totally dependent on the other nation for one or the other reason so this interdependence is one of the uh, limitation of this globalization tax avoidance some companies are able to avoid paying taxes so they take production activities in other countries so this is one of the very common reasons uh, for which the companies take the decision of starting the production plants in the foreign nations 
just they want to avoid the taxes in their nation the next is the cultural loss now specific cultural characteristics from some countries are slowly disappearing now here uh, if you take india the entry of foreign nationals uh, the foreign goods or the products slowly and steadily they are becoming successful in enhancing their own products or services like people have started to like those products they are trying those products they are moving ahead with those products so here if you see the indian scenario today even uh, these foreign products are slowly and steadily penetrating into the market indian market also and somewhere they there is a thread that we might lose our culture now this process doesn't happen in a day or a two but slowly and steadily uh, when people start liking the product there is a possibility of penetrating into the market so this is about the globalization the next part is the uh, localization localization is is the process of adapting a product to a specific target market <clears throat> it is the process of adapting a product to a specific target market localization takes that product and makes it highly relevant for one specific market McDonald's operates over thirty thousand restaurants in hundred countries. Its worldwide expansion is an example of globalization. By design, the corporation creates a menu adaptable to various local tastes and customs. This policy is an example of internationalization. Many of the McDonald's. restaurants in israel serve kosher food and drink and close during the sabbath and jewish holidays in india it has changed its menu as most of them don't eat beef or pork there are examples of localization like expand into new markets penetrate easily overcome cultural and social barriers also the competitive edge localizing products will help gain competitive edge now here again companies that are native to the local markets if global competitors they are not thinking of localizing their products then company will have a clear advantage and be able to get the firm foothold in the new market the localization will increase the customer satisfactions also it will show commitment to the customers so suppose if you are getting the product of your choice okay if it's a global company and adhering to the norms of the localites in terms of taste and preferences so they become near and dear to the customers and the customers are satisfied so as just now i have given a example of mcdonalds when they entered into a uh, india Okay, they faced lot of criticism, lot of problems due to their menu. It had to uh, adapt the local taste and preference in its product, and then it succeeded in satisfying the customer demand and preference. This localization increases the brand loyalty also. So once uh, you touch the hearts of the customer, that is. you satisfy the customer 
then the sky is the limit and the ultimate outcome is the revenue increase in the revenue or revenue generation Now, localization is the adaptation of a product or service to meet the needs of a particular language, culture, or desired population. So here, uh, suppose if you are entering into the local, like in India also, if you see, there is variation. So if you are using the marketing mix, maybe in North India, if you are using the promotional strategy, the same would not be, um, the same will not click at, at the Southern part. Maybe you will have to change the advertising you need to adapt to the local cultures and values their taste and preference should be taken into consideration similarly on the global uh, platform you need to take the local variations into consideration as far as the localization is considered now as i have given you an example of uh, mcdonald's even domino's uh, they try to include and mold products according to the local taste and preference um, the other example is the Netflix. With over 75 million members in over 190 countries, Netflix has established itself as the world's leading internet television with locally created and globally distributed content and heavy attention to in-house subtitles and audio dubbings. Netflix has shown a great appreciation of regional cultural difference and preferences. So when you take into consideration the local touch, to your products or services. So penetration into that market becomes much more easier. Similarly, Coca-Cola's new marketing strategy that revolves from the statement, think local, act local. Though it's a global company, it says this mantra that when you are uh, into that local, that is think local, act locally. It says that it does not offer a bottle of drink. It sells an experience and happiness to its buyers. Now the mar company's marketing and content localization was showcased during the Share a Coke campaign. It had a campaign, Share a Coke campaign, where this was seen. Now, uh, in China, it is considered disrespectful to refer initial names of people. So here, this initially conflicted uh, the strategy of Coke. So they introduced uh, in this campaign the words like classmate, close friend. So one cannot think of bypassing the cultural constraints. One has to think about it. So this was a problem with uh, KFC in China. So here in this lo uh, localization, web marketing, cultural norms, purchasing preference, they all play a very important role. So here, uh, any doubts up till here? Hello? Hello? No, ma'am. Okay, the next uh, concept is localization. Now, what is this uh, localization? Uh, now, if you see this localization is a combination of two words, that is globalization and localization. The term is used to describe a product or a service that is developed and distributed globally, but is also adjusted to accommodate the user or consumer in a local market. For example, if you take cars sold worldwide, so a global player sells a car worldwide, 
but adjusted to meet to local criteria like uh, emission standards or what side the steering wheel is located advertising campaigns designed to suit to the cultural needs the preference of the people now this uh, localization this was the term in uh, harvard business review in 1980 which was uh, termed by ronald robertson who wrote that globalization meant the simultaneity the companies work with decentralized authority structures now here since you are taking the cognizance of the localites though the companies are into the global market but those who are taking the cognizance of the local needs and demands and make changes in their products or services to suit to the local needs they work with the decentralized authority structures and for companies that exist and compete in multiple different cultural contexts so here centralization will not play much a important role in globalization those companies who are adapting this globalization for them they should have their own decentralized authority structures headquarters maintained here market research plays a very vital role for companies the target marketing in different markets their understanding their needs preferences cultural backgrounds will help master the companies into the areas which they are heading now i had given you example of uh, mcdonald mcdonald took much more time to realize the local preferences but once it's realized today if we see they are they have penetrated into the market they are successful whirlpool uh, changed the designs okay especially designed agitators in washing machines to help indian women wash sarees okay because in other foreign nations uh, the ladies they don't wear the sarees that's why whirlpool had to change the designs localized refrigerators asian market now if you consider put a refrigerator in their living room as a sign of status symbol now here when you think of status symbol then uh, the attribute of treating it as a home decor plays a vital role which maybe in other foreign nations that's not the issue so here bright colors like red and blue were introduced to meet the local requirements these changes seem very small but make a big difference for the customers starbucks stores now uh, if you consider in india as there is a law on slaughtering cows there is no beef or pork on starbucks menu in india which it is in other nations the mainly serve are vegetarian options like you know chatpata paratha wrap or veg paneer spices mtv launched in 1981 it's a successful music channel but when launched in uk it didn't experience the same level of popularity they localized to the uk music and lifestyle culture then they had the better ratings so here uh, when the companies think of entering into the nations it depends upon the company whether to go for localization localizations will give you a will give a penetration into the market with more revenues but the company should be willing to mold the product it's not easy to mold the product and take care of the products in each and every nations against this maybe there is an ideology that you have the uh, single product which is standardized and which works in all the nations now here when it comes to the 
clothings or food products okay so one has to think about this globalization while well, maybe if you are a technology driven uh, you have a technology driven product then in that case maybe one can think of entering with the standardization so any doubts as far as this is considered up till here hello no ma'am so we will move on to the next part that is a global integration responsiveness grid now this is a grid or we usually say it's a quadrant now for the companies which go into this globalization different terms are used like cross national border multinationals global business transnational companies international firms etc uh, now this model of global integration of responsiveness grid was stated by barlett and hoshal they clustered these businesses based upon two criteria one is the global integration second one is the local responsiveness so the whole grids rest upon these two uh, attributes that is global integration and local responsiveness businesses that are highly globally integrated have the objectives to reduce costs as much as possible by creating economies of scale through a more standardized product offering worldwide businesses that are highly locally responsive have extra objectives to adapt products and services to specific local needs it seems that these strategic options are mutually exclusive but there are companies trying to be both globally integrated and locally responsive together these two factors generate four types of strategies that internationally operating businesses can pursue they are multi domestic global transnational and international strategies so these four strategies or you can say four uh, types have evolved so this is also known as barlett and goshal's typology of multinational companies now if you see the first one that is the multi domestic strategy okay based upon the strategies these are formed maybe i won't be able to finish this point we will uh, discuss this later in the next session okay any doubts maybe i will discuss this later hello no ma'am okay for the next session uh, the marketing students it's a marketing specialization subject you have a session at 8 o'clock okay so today we stop here and in the next session we will continue with this uh, global integration responsiveness grid okay thank you students